What? Okay. So. All right. So what we studied in the last chapter was Kirchhoff's current law, and in this chapter, the, the well, the the first part of this chapter. In the second part, we're going to uh, study loop analysis. Okay. And the equation here shows. Uh, basically is, is the explanation of why loop analysis works in terms of Faraday's law, one of Maxwell's laws of physics. And it's Michael Faraday. Okay. Yes. And uh, even the great, or well, the Baroness Margaret Thatcher, I don't know if you probably, I don't know if you know who she is. She used to be Prime Minister of England, of uh, Britain, Great Britain, sorry. And uh, her and Ronald Reagan were very close, okay, and uh, so obviously, you know, and, uh, and they were both uh, very, what do you call it, very uh, great proponents of, you know, capitalism and things like that, making lots of money. So, um, but and even she said that the value of Faraday's work today must be higher than the capitalization of all the shares on the, on the stock exchange. So, there you go. So it's telling you how important Faraday's work is. Well, yeah, I guess you're talking about the London Stock Exchange, which at the time, well, it still is one of the biggest. So, okay, loop analysis. So we understood that the uh, the goal of of um, node analysis was to determine the unknown nodal voltages. In this case, we want to we want to use uh, we're trying to find the uh, the value of branch currents. So let's have a look how we go about doing that. So do you remember what a branch was? Okay, very good. The circuit elements and its two nodes. Okay. So what is a loop? A loop is a non-intersecting closed path around a circuit. So we talked about that in the first lecture. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. How many loops can you see? Okay, very good. So, okay, so let's have a look at this example here. We've got uh, a bunch of branch currents here. So how many unknowns do we have? Okay, you've got nine unknowns. Do you really have nine unknowns? You have less. Why? No, not quite. Because of what you just learned. I want an I7 just different signs. Yeah, exactly. There's relationships between them. For instance, if you know I7 and I3, you can find I2. Yeah? So, there aren't nine unknowns. We can combine some of the others to find the, the remaining. So KCL reduces the number of unknowns, okay, to just one, two, three, four. If you know f um, those f the br the currents in those four branches, you can find the current in any branch in the circuit. Yeah. So okay. The not necessarily. Yeah. I know it looks like that, but not necessarily. Okay. Um, so. The way we can represent this is that we, for, for, through a figment of uh, our imagination, okay, we can imagine the currents in this circuit to be a superposition of a minimum number of loop currents. Okay, if we know those, if we know the amount of currents in those loops, we can find the current in any branch. Okay, so what I'm saying is. Let's imagine that I1 is a, is, a, is a current that goes around this way. Let's imagine I4 is a current that goes around this loop. And I6 goes around here and I3 goes around here. Okay? So, and when, they, when those two currents, just like water currents, pass through this resistor, they combine. Okay? I1 is going around this way and I3 is going around this way. And so as they pass through here, I1 and I2, uh, I1 and I3 combine. Make sense? 
So yeah, so this is this is the uh, idea of a loop analysis. We're, we're we're thinking about it in a very abstract way. We're not saying the currents are actually flowing this way in these little eddies. We it's a mathematical construct used to simplify the problem, and it's a very fast way of determining what's the minimum number of unknowns that we need. Okay, to know to completely define the whole circuit. Okay, so we can see here, I'm trying to show you how the loop currents combine. Can you see this loop current flows through this cross-section in an upward fashion? This loop current also flows through in an upward fashion, so they combine additively. In this case, if we want to know how much current is flowing this way, then I6 is in the same sense as the current this way, but I3 is flowing in the opposite sense. So the total current flowing this way is going to be I6 minus I3. Okay? So that's how we combine loop currents. So, um, uh, you know, in general, the minimum number of variables that I need to describe the branch currents is B minus N plus 1, where B is a number of branches, N is a number of nodes, okay? So this equation allows us to um, uh, determine what's the minimum number of loop currents we need to define that. But you don't need to know this equation, okay? Although it is interesting. We just we just uh, uh, let, let's just say that we use this equation. I'm just an intermediate step. I'm going to show you a very easy way to to determine how many loop currents you need. Now let's say we knew we needed we knew we needed four loops. Now we can draw those four loops in any way we like. Okay? So as you can see, as long as at least one loop passes through every single branch. Okay? Does that make sense? So you can you see the the current in this branch is a combination of the orange and green current in this branch is a combination of the orange and red the current in this branch is the orange only the, the current in this branch is the blue only and the current in this branch is made out of four okay so this is if you really wanted to make life complicated for yourselves you would choose loop currents like this but you don't want to make life complicated for yourselves so the easiest and the best thing is what's called a mesh analysis okay so what we do, you can see that if you squint really hard, this circuit looks like a, a fishing net, a mesh. Yeah, And each one of these loops is where the fish get caught. So what we do, if we put a current in each one of those loops, and if we have them all go in the same way, that's going to simplify our analysis. And it automatically gives us the correct number of loops that we need to define the problem. Do you remember how we realized it was four? This automatically gives you four current loops. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so is the current really going around in this way? No. It's just a mathematical construct to allow us to quickly determine what's the minimum number of unknowns we can uh, use to completely define the whole problem. Okay, so this is just to... Remind you, it's a figment of your imagination. This is what you're eating tomorrow, you'll be eating an egg for breakfast. Maybe you'll be dreaming about a huge egg that's got scaffolding and you, the sun is coming out. Interesting. Okay, so to solve for these loop cards, we need to, f we need to write four equations. Okay, four unknowns, four equations. So to write those equations, okay, we are going to use um, Kirchhoff's voltage law. But before we use Kirchhoff's voltage law, let's understand that if there's an independent current source, like as here and here, note that automatically, just like independent voltage sources define the voltage difference between two nodes, this can define the, the current difference or the current in a loop. So, for instance, the current flowing through this 
independent current source is purely I2. So it defines I2 as being 2 milliamps. Does that make sense? Do you want me to repeat that? Yeah, sure. So you have this independent current source here. The amount of current flowing through here is equal to the, the, the current flowing through the single loop that passes through this branch. Does that make sense? So there's only one loop passing through that branch, and that loop is I2. And this tells us that I2 must equal 2. Because I2 is passing through this 2 milliamp source, and that, def that, that basically fixes the value of I2. Okay? Make sense? Now, if it's in the middle like this, this is telling us that the combination of the currents as they see I4 is going this way why is it 2? because there's a 2 oh yeah that's that's to make you think <laughs> let's make sure you're paying attention so, we can see that I4 is going up and I3 is going down. So the total current in the upward sense passing that is basically um, equivalent to the amount of current being produced by this source is going to equal I4 minus I3 and that must equal this quantity here which is 4, not 2. Sorry about that. Copy and paste error. Does that make sense? So the in, the in the independent uh, current sources have a similar function to the independent voltage sources in your nodal analysis. All right. Why do you choose I4 minus I3 and not I3 minus I4? Yeah, you see, I3 is going down. So that would give you the amount of current going down. So, so the, red arrow in the, the red arrow tells you which way the, dire the direction of the current just like the plus and the minus. Yeah, so you see, if we, want, if we calculate the net current downwards, the net current going down is equal to I3 minus I4. Make sense? But then net current going down is actually minus 4 milliamps. So it's the same equation as that. Good? Yeah, you guys are too tired now. You need the break. See, you're all yawning and you won't want to go home early. <laughs> Forget about it. I think you better take a break. No. Why don't you have a, a little 20 minute break, okay? Yeah, that's a mistake. I'm never going to. Yeah. No. Okay, so does everybody understand how, how this works? Yeah? Great. So, okay, so we can get equations from using these independent uh, current sources. Okay, so that's one source of equations. The other source of equations is to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, for any closed path, if we walk around it, okay, and we sum up the voltage drops, we will get zero. Okay? So, in this case, if we walk around this circuit, as we walk around from here to here, the voltage drop in this direction will equal the current in this direction passing through this resistor multiplied by the resistor. Okay? And that's what I1 times 1K. As we come down here, the voltage drop as we go from here to here is going to equal 1k multiplied by the net current flowing down. And what is the net current flowing downwards? Right, I1 minus I2, very good. Then we walk across here. And what's the net current going this way? I1 minus I3, very good. We're going to multiply that by 1, 1k. This is, actually, this is supposed to be a 1k here as well. And then finally, is this a drop or an increase? Yeah. 
as we walk from here to here. It's an increase, and that's why it's a negative quantity here. And that equals zero. Okay? So, and we can get equations in, these way, in, in this way. Yeah, see wh what I'm saying is I'm adding the voltage drops mm -hmm. V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 oh. V1 is this V2 is this V3 is this and V4 is minus 12 oh, so you just, oh, so Because that indicate that you have a negative value. That's right, because it's not a drop okay. See, I'm, I'm adding up the drops as I walk around that make sense? Mm -hmm. Great. Wonderful. All right, let's practice. Let's practice using loop analysis. So, we need to find I0 in the circuit using uh, loop analysis. So, we're going to use a mesh analysis in, in uh, all cases. So, what do we do when we have a mesh analysis? Yeah. That's right, you draw a loop in each box. So we're going to break up the currents. The loop currents give them a symbol and a direction. Okay, so you need a symbol and a direction. And it would just be easier, you don't have to, but it would be easier if you draw all the loops going the same way. And that will get you into a nice pattern you'll see when you write the equations. Okay, so number one, we've defined the loop currents, okay, that we're going to solve for. And if we know these three values, we can find the current in any branch. So the first thing, are there any independent current sources? No. So there's no equations to be got easily. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to apply KVL around I1. We are summing voltage drops. So let's start here. As we walk through in the direction of the current, okay, we're going to walk through the 3 volt source. Is that an increase or a drop? Increase. So that's yeah. minus 3. Very good. As we walk through here, what's the voltage drop? Yeah, 6I1, because the total current through this resistor is I1. Now note that if, if the current is in milliamps and the resistance is in kiloohms, when you multiply these two things together, you get volts. Okay? So that's how I'm eliminating the K values in my equations. Okay? Now, then I walk down here, what is the net voltage drop? Very good. And then we come back to here, and what does this equal? Absolutely, very good. Now we can do KVL around I2. Okay, so as we walk up here, what's the current going upwards now through the 12? Very good. So the current going upwards is going to be I2 minus I1. And that will give us the correct value for the voltage drop as we move from here to here. Does that make sense? Do you see what happened there? Then we walk across here. So what's that contribution? Minus 6. Very good. Now we walk down here. Very good. Once again, if there's any parameters in the, in the, in, introduced in the problem, always try to express them in terms of the, the loop currents, okay? So now the final thing now is to do KVL around I3. And when we do that, let's start off over here. You can start anywhere you like. Well, I, I know is actually 
I know. Do you see how the sense of I know is down? So I know, yes, you're right. That will also be I2 minus I3. Yeah, that's correct. But it's better not to put 6I0 at the end because now you've introduced another variable in your equations. So, you know, tr the easiest thing to do is if they give you anything like this, I0, etc., express it in terms of your unknowns, I1, I2, I3. And that simplifies things a lot easier. Oh, uh, simplifies things. So, it, as we walk around the third loop, as we go from here to here, what is the voltage drop in the 6 ohm? Six kilohm. Yeah. Very good. And then what's the voltage drop in the 12K? And what's the voltage drop as we go from here to here? Great. There you go, three equations. That's it. That's it. Solve solve the solve for the unknowns and you're done. And then if you need to find I naught, just combine your values in this way to find what you want to find. Great. What if we have a independent current source? How would you that for the voltage? If you had an independent current source, that's gonna be a problem. Yeah. So let's have a look. Okay. That's absolutely right, because if we have a loop with an independent current source, when we're walking around here, what is the voltage drop? We don't know what it is, okay? Because if we draw the, the IV characteristics for a voltage source, it's just a flat line. So you don't know what the voltage is. It could be anywhere between plus or minus infinity, okay? So that's going to be a problem. So the way we solve this, it's called a super path, but it's or a super loop. But I like to call it a super path. Okay. So what you do is you you create a path, right, that avoids going through trying to find the voltage across a uh, independent current source. So can you see by Taking this path, this super path, we can avoid finding the voltage drop across here. And let's go through this super path right now. So as we go across here, this is going to be I3 minus I1. Okay. We, then we go across here, the voltage drop is I4 minus I2 times 1. Down here, it's I4 times 1. Go all the way across here, and then finally I3 times 1 equals zero. That's a super path or a super loop. It's actually, yeah, you, you'll find it um, it's in a textbook it's called a super loop. Okay. When can you use it? When you have an independent current source. Yeah. So, you see, dependent current sources? Yeah, you can use any current source. Yeah, because you can't, you don't know the voltage drop across that current source. You already happy with that? Okay. So we can we can choose a a path anywhere around this circuit, anywhere you like, and the sum will equal zero. And we're going to verify this in a lab next week. It's already Thursday. Yeah, we're going to have a lab. We're going we're going to do some soldering. All kinds of fun. Oh, there is, there is. You don't have to bring anything. I'll have a look at that. Yeah. It's going to be in here. I've got, I'll just bring the equipment in. Yeah. No. <laughs> you hate writing lab reports. All right. Go for it. Solve this problem.
So, yeah, for all the circuits, irrespective of what elements you have in there, you're always going to need the mesh currents. So I draw the mesh currents, just uh, imagine it's a net, these are the holes, and have your mesh currents all go in the same way, and just label them. Okay, so you need your mesh currents in, in any case, even if you have these independent current sources. Now you've done that, let's try and get the easiest equations we can. The first easiest, what's the easiest equation? Yeah, the fact that there's only one loop current passing through this independent current source, so we automatically know that I2 is equal to 2 milliamps. Okay, that's easy. What's the second easiest equation we can get? Absolutely, this independent current source is, is setting the difference between, if you want to know, it's, uh, this current is going up, and so you can see that I4 agrees with that sense, but I3 is going against this current. Absolutely, so the next one we can write is I4 minus I3 must equal 4 milliamps. Okay? Okay, so now let's look for some other easy equations. So perhaps we could do KVL. Around I1. Okay, and as we do that, we are going to sum voltage drops. Okay, so how many turns will we have? One, two, three, four voltage drops as we go around that path. So the first voltage drop will simply be 1 times I1, 1K times I1 in milliamps. As we go down here, it's going to be plus. Yep, I1 minus I2. No, it's not really picking up. I1 plus I1 minus I2. And then we go across here. So we can see I1 is the agrees with the current going this way. But I two does I three does not. So the net current going towards the left. That's it. And then finally, what's the voltage drop as we go through here? Yep. That's not a minus. The plus, because the drop. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, that's our third equation. We have four unknowns, so we need one more equation. Now, we can't do KVL around here because we don't know the voltage drop across here. We can't do KVL here. We can't do KVL here. So we have to choose a path over which we can apply KVL. And there's um, how many choices do we have? Two choices? Yeah, one choice is to walk around here. You see how the voltage drops over that path can be calculated quite easily. And then another choice is to walk around here. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. It's easier, yeah, the smaller one has less terms, that's true. So if we now do the uh, KVL around I3 and I4, around the super loop. So our term over here is going to be I3 minus I1. I'm leaving out the fact that we are multiplying by 1k, so there's, there's a coefficient there. But And then we walk around here and we see plus I four minus I two, very good, because I two is at the top there. And then I'm not bothering to put the fact that there's a one here for the one K 
if that wasn't a 1k, we'd have to multiply it by the resistance. And then plus I4, and that coming down here, and then up here, plus I3 is equal to 0. That gives us our fourth equation, and we can solve those um, to get the unknowns. That was pretty good. Okay. So, if we have a dependent source, as, as with node analysis, we just put all the parameters in terms of the mesh currents and solve using the usual technique. So, let's practice. <laughs> It's going to be karaoke. <laughs> Oops. Put the wrong place. Here you go. Oh, I need to append pages here. Append to. All right. Yeah, have a go at this one. So remember, the, the first thing we do is we're going to write the unknowns here, Vx. Well, in any case, what we've got to do, in, it doesn't matter what's in the circuit, we have to... No. We're not labeling nodes. We, yeah, this is a mesh analysis. So we've got to define our mesh currents. Okay, got to do that in every case. So we've done that. We've defined mesh currents. Now remember, this voltage is just being measured. Nothing's co there's not drawing any current through here. Okay, it just wants to know the voltage drop across here. So um, how can we find V0 in terms of the mesh currents? Very good. So I4, 12 I4 is going to equal V0, okay, with I4 in milliamps. Okay. Um, how would you define Vx in terms of the the parameters I1, I, I, and what I do with I2? Sorry about that. Oh, see Daisy. Okay. We'll be back in a second. Technical difficulties, absolutely. One more. Yep, here we go. So I one